So cloud computing, why it matters. Quick introductions first, my name is Simon Wardley. I work at Canonical on software services. Canonical is the company that sponsors and supports Ubuntu. Now before I start this presentation, a few words of warning. I'm a scientist by training, which means I like graphs. Now I've plotted a quick graph of the level of audience pain, that's you, against the number of slides given in a 20 minute presentation. Now I reckon there's a safe limit of around about 15 slides. Now because I'm a scientist and I like to experiment, I thought I'd do this presentation with no less than 193 slides. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but don't worry if you do get a bit lost. This is a talk on cloud computing. Being lost is normal. So what is cloud computing? On the way here, I thought I'd ask some people, so I asked a taxi driver in London, and he said it's like computers on the internet in it. Well, that's actually very good. So I asked a technology strategist, and he said it's the future of technology and a disruptive shift of the computing stack towards online services. Well, that's just a fancy way of saying it's like computers on the internet in it. <laughs> so I asked a businessman, and he said it's what the technology strategist said it was, but it's also about the provision of computer resources like electricity and getting rid of expensive costs like sysadmins. So I asked a sysadmin, and he said it's like SaaS or software as a service and infrastructure provision and pass, that's platform as a service and utility computing and being provided on public clouds, which is different from private clouds, which aren't cloud computing, unless of course you're talking about hybrid clouds, which sort of are, and it's also hyperlocking and did I mention infrastructure. So I had a look on Google and I found 67 definitions of cloud computing. Now whilst this doesn't actually help if you're trying to understand a field, it's fantastic for me because I'm trying to pad out a presentation. So let's look at those 67 definitions. Number one. <laughs> On-demand self-service internet infrastructure where you pay as you go and you use what you need, either through a browser application or API, broken into multiple segments including cloud infrastructure, cloud platform, cloud application, bracket C, cloud pyramid. So what's a cloud pyramid? Well, it turns out it's another eight definitions and a long-running debate over whether the cloud is a triangle and if so, which way does it point? <laughs> Lost yet? You will be. Definition two. Okay, I'm not really going to read out 67 definitions. All I'm going to say is that having done so, I came to the conclusion that there is no definition for cloud computing. Unless, of course, you're talking to a technology strategist who normally says cloud is their product. So I looked around for an analogy to help me explain what was going on. Why were we having such problems with definitions? And I think I found one. What is industrial revolution? Well, I asked my taxi driver and he said it's like mechanized horses in it, which is not bad. A quick search on Google found 43 definitions. Here we go again. Number one, broad socioeconomic change starting in the early 19th century. Number two, rapid development of industry starting in the early 19th century. Oh no, can't even agree on century here. No definition once more. And this is 200 years after the event. Now at this rate, Kittens will be online before we understand what cloud computing is. <laughs> the reason why we have such a problem with definition is that the industrial revolution, it's not a thing. It's a transformation, a transition. So I'm going to explore this and the fundamentals behind this because that's at the heart of the problem. So the Industrial Revolution was a time when we went from bespoke cottage industry, what I like to call Mrs. Muggings, Inc., to one of mass production. 
And this change depended upon a number of factors. It needed the idea or the concept of industrial production, combined with the suitability of activities for that, combined with the technology for this change, and also a changing attitude in society to adopt these new models. These forces are what caused the Industrial Revolution. And you can't define Industrial Revolution in terms of our product alone, because it's more than this. So whilst my taxi driver's definition is very neat, it's ultimately wrong. And the same is true with cloud computing, because cloud computing is more than just about technology, it's a combination of different factors. And this is where I, I'd like us to start. So first, I want to have a look at concept. The origins of cloud computing can be traced back to 1968, when John McCarthy predicted that in the future, computing resources would be provided just like electricity. And he gave this idea an A. He called it utility computing. But where did this idea come from? Well, to understand this, we actually have to go further back and understand the change in the electricity industry. So, back in 1821, electricity was brand new. It was an innovation. It was hot. Over the time, a number of bespoke systems were created, and then products were introduced. And then around about the 1890s, Edison and Westinghouse introduced the first utility electricity grids. Electricity had become much more of a commodity. In this case, it was provided as utility services. Harvey Hubble then created the plug, and then in the 1930s we had the national grid. Electricity provision had transformed from an innovation to much more of a utility service. It had become ubiquitous, it had become common, and it had lost its spark. Now this transformation is known as commoditization, and a similar pattern can be seen in IT infrastructure. So starting off with the innovation of the Z3, 1941, to the introduction of bespoke systems like Leo, to the first products such as the IBM 650, the next logical step was eventually going to be a shift towards much more utility services. And this is literally what John McCarthy predicted. In fact, Douglas Parkhill, 1966, predicted it before him. But both these men made the, the leap, the conceptual leap, to say that in the future, what had happened to the electricity industry was going to happen to the computer industry. And this is the basic concept behind cloud computing. But the question always was, we had the concept, when would activities be suitable for this change? Is there some way that we could plot this change to determine when it was going to happen? Well, it turns out there is a way we can do this. I'm going to plot a graph of ubiquity from something novel, like a good film with Tom Cruise in, to something common, like a film with Tom Cruise in. And against this, I'm going to plot certainty um, from something which I don't know, like whether I'm going to finish this presentation in time, to something which I do know, like how much time I've got. I've got a big clock here warning me. So now I'm going to add some data. This is TVs, phones, and VCRs plotted against these axes. And what this hypothesizes is there's an S-curve relationship between the ubiquity and the certainty of an activity. It describes a pathway for how a rare and poorly understood innovation becomes a much common and well-defined commodity. 